Hi everyone, this is Rob Roy of LA Wave Options and welcome to the US market update. I'd like to further along what I briefly mentioned uh, in the last recording and that's dealing with these repo agreements that the Federal Reserve has been doing. There's been so many news headlines uh, regarding the China trade deal and then now we have that uh, uh, impeachment inquiry that's going on and it just seems like those headlines have have kind of uh, dampened this. There are some investment houses that I have a lot of respect for uh, that are concerned about it. And I just think it's something that everybody needs to wear, be aware of and have in the back of your mind. Now what repo agreements are is when the Federal Reserve basically sells banks uh, short-term money. It's when the financial system begins to seize up a little bit or, or, or tighten up and tighten up significantly. In fact, interest rates last week spiked up to uh, uh, eight and a half on some nights, 10% on other. So it's normally, again, just overnight lending. Banks have requirements where they have to have so much money uh, in liquidity uh, each and every night before they can close. If they don't have it, they usually borrow it, and quite often they borrow it from uh, the Federal Reserve or other banks. But in this case, there's just no money to be found, and that's why uh, the interest rates are spiking up. So when the liquidity dries up, interest rates spike, right? It's all supply and demand. If there's not a supply and there's demand, well, then people that have the money to lend it are going to charge more. And that's when you get these spikes in interest rates. And the Federal Reserve doesn't want that. They want to keep the rates down, keep the financial system going. Just to give you an idea, the last time this happened, the last time the Federal Reserve injected this much was back in the uh, financial crisis, the beginning of the financial crisis in 2008. That's why I think we need to at least be aware of this. Are we to that point yet? No, but it's certainly a red flag uh, to be aware of. And I talked about the uh, repos that the... Federal Reserve did last Monday, um, well, they did Tuesday through Thursday another $203 billion, and then on Friday they did $75 billion. So that's a lot of money, hundreds of billions of dollars that the Federal Reserve is basically injecting. Now their plan is to continue to do that, uh, both on the overnight repos and they're creating some 14-day uh, repo agreements as well. And they're gonna do, their plan is to do at least $30 billion of each all the way through October 10th. So that's an awful lot of money coming into the system. Now that, the financial markets, I should say. Now that's gonna make it a little bit difficult for the markets to go down unless it's just not enough and the Federal Reserve loses control and then we get some sort of a, uh, a black swan event, something similar to what occurred back in the financial crisis in 2008. Uh, barring that, if things do calm down and settle down with that excess liquidity, it could actually help to support the market and move higher because the market's looking a little, uh, little uneasy right now. And we'll uh, take a look at that uh, when we look at the charts. In fact, let's do that now. So in taking a look at a chart of the uh, SPY, which as you know is what we always look at for the market, I don't consider the Dow to be uh, a good barometer of the market in general, it's only 30 stocks. So we always look at the S&P 500, the blue chips. And if you've been following these recordings, you already know that. Uh, but taking a look at the market, uh, one of the things that we notice is that we did make new highs. You can see where the uh, LA Wave relabeled that high uh, with the five. So we broke out of this little consolidation that we had and did move up and make the new highs. However, we didn't make significant new highs. In fact, we just kind of just barely made new highs and that looked to be an excuse for people to sell into. So you make a new high and, and they sell. Same thing that had occurred back at the end of July. So the market made new highs from those peaks that we had back at the end of April and May, made new highs, they sold into it. We make new highs again, they sold into it. So some of the smarter money is using those new highs as an excuse to get out. Will that continue? Maybe, but as I just talked about, with all this liquidity coming in, we'll have to see how that plays out. So I really think that uh, we have a strangle on the SPY for our subscribers. And I think that uh, right now that's a pretty good place to be because you could make a pretty good argument for both sides. We could certainly follow through with the zigzag pattern that we talked about in the last recording where we continue higher from here or we could fall back down, fall significantly. We could even break the lows that uh, were from August and come all the way back down to this previous four. So we could go either direction from here, hence a, uh, a strangle being a good uh, position to have on so that you have both sides covered. And if we do break those highs uh, from September, then we could uh, really move with this uh, additional liquidity coming in. 
But uh, really, the market feels pretty uneasy right now. There's no positive news headlines. Um, and then we have this uh, uh, liquidity issue that's occurring on a short-term basis. And as I mentioned, I really this is far more serious than attention it's being given. So keep an eye on it. Keep that in the back of your mind when you're making your own trading decisions and positions and make sure that you have uh, protection. If we take a look at the moving averages, key for the market here is the, the lime green lines, the 10 day moving average. That's the shorter term trending indication. Uh, we've broken below that and we closed on Friday just above the 50 day moving average, which is that royal blue line. So closing just above the 50 day moving average. And that's what a lot of people look at for more of a mid mid-range trending type of a uh, moving average indicator. Now the two of them are fairly close together so it's not giving too much of a, uh, uh, a negative signal with the fact that there's not much separation between the 10 and the 50. So the fact that we're below the 10 and above the 50, not that big a deal is what I'm trying to say. But you can come back here and see how uh, the markets really follow along with that 10 day moving average. In fact, I said it before, I'm going to say it again. This will not be the last time you hear it. No security in any time frame gets very far away from the 10 day moving average. Doesn't happen. When there's separation, you're either going to get a move back or you're going to get a pause and let the moving average catch up one way or the other. But things never separate too far from the 10 day moving average. So here we are. Let's we'll see if we can go up and make the new highs. But uh, we're in a little bit of no man's land right now, I think, in the markets. And that's going to uh, uh, really dictate where we go from here and uh, see if the Federal Reserve is able to calm them down. October 10th is, you know, it's only 10 days away, basically. And uh, we'll see how things work out when trade opens on Monday. Right now, the futures are up a little bit, about seven points. Not a big deal. Uh, so not getting too much of an indication there one way or the other. Looking at the VIX, the VIX doesn't seem too concerned. I mean, it's come down a little bit. We have this gap right here, and that'll get filled at some point in time. We know gaps get filled. We just don't know when. There's no real rhyme or reason as to the timing on when gaps get filled. Sometimes it's immediately. Sometimes it takes a little while. Uh, but considering everything that's going on right now to have a VIX just trading around 17 uh, doesn't seem that high or that extreme by any way, shape or form. In fact, uh, for trading options, it's a, it's a pretty good level because you've got a little bit of volatility in there to move it, but uh, well down uh, from the volatility that we saw uh, back in August where things had uh, spiked up into the 20s. So volatility's calmed a bit but uh, still just a touch of it so that things actually will move. I did want to look at TBT uh, as well to show uh, interest rates. And we know that the Federal Reserve is cutting rates now. Now they're injecting all this liquidity. And the idea of a repo agreement is that they, the Federal Reserve, the central bank, sells the banks the money overnight and then they buy them back the next day. So... The thing that I was reading is that the Federal Reserve may intend to just allow these to expire. In other words, not buy them back, which just leaves the liquidity. So they inject the liquidity and doesn't come back out. We could do a whole recording, a whole series on fiat currency, which is what the U.S. dollar is. It's just nothing backing it other than the good faith of the U.S. government. And the Federal Reserve does this a lot where they sell bonds and treasuries uh, to the government. It's basically more of a balance sheet transaction. And then they just let them expire and fall off. So they don't pull that liquidity back out. That's a thing that normally would cause inflation by having all that excess liquidity in the markets. But as we know, uh, inflation is, uh, is not an issue right now. So uh, quite interesting. But uh, looking at uh, uh, the chart of TBT for interest rates, the charts relabeled from where we were before. We had an extended wave five. So we relabeled and we've only had a 22, call it the 23.6% Fib retracement. For me, uh, in my Elliott Wave trading, using that Fibonacci level, I don't even consider that to be a corrective move. So I consider this to be one big, long uh, impulse move to the downside uh, that's occurring through here. And we'll see if uh, we bounce further from here. But right now, we've started to come back down. And lower interest rates, I mean, that's what everybody wants, right? It's all the countries are fighting to lower their currency to keep their currency uh, down uh, so that it makes trade easier. Uh, and also makes paying the uh, debt that you have on all the uh, um, money that you've borrowed easier to manage. So it keeps that down. And if you've ever seen a chart of the uh, U.S. debt clock, it's, it's scary in itself. Uh, so it helps keep that down. But 
we they want that to be managed uh, rates to be managed to the downside they don't want rates going down because there's viewed to be economic trouble ahead which is kind of where we are right now which is why the drop in rates has been causing some uncertainty in the markets not spurring uh, great moves to the upside in the markets so we'll see if uh, we come down and test these lows right here uh, on rates and we may in the very near future with uh, what's going on uh, with all this uh, uh, Fed injection of liquidity from the uh, repo money market uh, markets in addition to just cutting rates in general and see how that plays out. But for now, it's looking uh, like uh, rates are going to stay down for a while. If they spike up, as I mentioned uh, before, careful what you wish for. I mean, we, we do want to see some sort of stabilization in rates so that it shows that uh, there's some calming uh, in the, the view of the economy down the road. But you don't want rates to spike too high because then that will definitely affect the markets in a negative way and we could get a significant move to the downside. So that catches you uh, up to date. We'll uh, keep an eye on those. We'll be back to report uh, again next week on, uh, on where the Federal Reserve is with, uh, with all of this. And uh, hopefully, again, you'll keep it in mind uh, for your own trading and make sure that your positions uh, have some protection. Take care, everybody.